Reprise de débat. Resuming debate. The Honourable Member for Salabari sur Bois. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, and I thank my colleague from Victoria for his uh, enlightening speech. It's very logical, and we've been waiting a long time for the Liberals to act on the issue of decriminalization as to how we can regulate this more appropriately, the whole issue of cannabis. It's very important for me to rise in the House today to speak to this motion on decriminalization of marijuana. It follows on um, comments made by uh, the minister during the election campaign. The Liberals made this a major theme um, of their agenda. And since they've been elected, now uh, they don't seem certain as to what they're going to do. They've made several announcements, and uh, we don't really have a deadline. We don't have a schedule for this. So what is the specific plan that the Liberal government has to move us towards decriminalization? We're st it's still really very unclear. They announced that it would be legalized in about a year, but they have remained remained silent about on how they're going to go about doing that. We know that uh, it can it was uh, it could have taken up to two years before the legalization process was set up and enforced, and therefore we need some kind of uh, consistency. We need clarity on how the legal process regarding cannabis will unfold. It has to be logical and it has to be applied equally across the provinces because currently the uh, penalties are not the same from province to province. It is not applied fairly and therefore there are a great deal of, there's a great deal of injustice across the country. I'm going to start with some figures. There is a health survey on Canadian communities talking about the uh, figures regarding cannabis consumption. In 2012, about 3 million people consumed cannabis over the previous year, and 43% of Canadians had already tried cannabis. However, consumption is going down. The Prime Minister and the Minister of Justice have repeated on several occasions that current legislation on this product is not sufficient, and I absolutely agree with them. And yet, so why aren't they decriminalizing it now, whereas the current system provides no solution, and worse yet, it uh, represents a loss of resources for justice and the police forces. As my colleague from Victoria said, we're talking about $4 million that are spent each year on arrests and uh, legal proceedings. When we realize that that $4 million, instead of being invested in repression, could be invested in education, awareness raising, prevention. My colleague from Trois-Rivières said that. I was a teacher as well. I worked with young people. We are close to the United States in my writing. We're close to the border and there's a lot of trafficking of uh, different kinds of drugs. So young people in my writing had easy access to these drugs and consumed it and without really realizing what the consequences of that could be. And many young adults, I'll be t coming uh, back to this later, but many young adults were arrested and to date they still have uh, police records. These are very serious consequences for these young people because you cannot ask for a pardon until you have had carried that record around for 10 years. So think of an 18 year old who is arrested for simple possession of marijuana, that person has to wait for 10 years to get it before he can get a job because no one wants to hire him because he has a police record. It's uh, very difficult to have access to housing, impossible to cross the border as well to go to the United States. Whereas in many American states of Vermont, New York, Maine, marijuana has already been decriminalized and even legalized in some states. So why in Canada, do we not yet have measures for that? Why are our young people unfairly targeted? Why do, are, will young people have obstacles before them for 10 years because criminal records uh, hang around for that long? So it's very serious and it is, it is even more ludicrous when we realize, when the Liberals have told us that they intend to legalize marijuana. So it's completely absurd to not decriminalize it now. Now, 
if we think about the impacts on young people, one third of people between uh, ages 18 and 24 consumed uh, marijuana in 2011, and two thirds of violations that are committed by young adults linked to uh, are linked to uh, the possession of marijuana. So that's thousands of cases each year, and we're talking about uh, some 60,000. 57,000 arrests per year for simple possession of marijuana in Canada. So if we wait another two years until the uh, legislation is in, is in place to legalize marijuana, then we're talking about uh, 120,000 further arrests. So it is simply absurd to put all that energy and all those resources into uh, these efforts. into something, into repressing something that is soon going to be legal. And what about all these young people with criminal records? Will their records disappear? What will the Liberals do with regard to that? It also limits people to, people's involvement in charitable organizations. Young people who want to get involved with their community to help out, they can't because often community groups, and I mean rightfully so, they need to be protected because sometimes they work with young people, with uh, fragile mental health. Uh, so obviously young people who want to get involved need to have, uh, need to show that they have no uh, criminal record. And so people who have been arrested for simple possession, well, they can't participate in these community groups. They can't help out in their community because they have a criminal record. So these people will have to disclose uh, that they have a medical records, that they have uh, criminal records rather, to their bank, to their insurance company, to uh, to their insurance companies for uh, cars or for housing. So they might not be able to uh, be able to drive to work if ever they should uh, find a job. So uh, they cannot cross the border to, if they have they have family or friends there or to work. So, uh, Madam Speaker. Not decriminalizing is means increasing difficulties that young people have to uh, enter their, the labor market and just to begin their adult lives. I have just, uh, talked with organizations in my writing and they all say unanimously that it is too sudden simply to legalize. There has to be an intermediary process, intermediary process that is decriminalization. It's a crucial step towards helping young people to adopt healthy behaviors and also to conduct prevention because currently, as many of the community partners in my riding, for example, the Director General of the Street Workers in Quebec and the Social Workers says that upstream education is needed and awareness raising to uh, make sure that young people under 18 understand the uh, impacts of legali legalization. He says that partners fear the uh, lack of uh, prevention worker, uh, lack of prevention work for young people. Young consumers uh, only think about uh, legalization of marijuana. They think about the impacts. And uh, they think that that means that they can consume in public. So, and uh, he is not the only partner who has, tell, who has told me that. Other community organizations have also told me that it is problematic that the government has already announced that marijuana would be legalized without announcing interim measures. Because people currently think that to, given the Prime Minister himself has said that marijuana is going to be legalized, well, now they have the right to, uh, to consume marijuana, to use marijuana, but they don't realize that. So... If people are not made aware of the restrictions that could accompany the legalization of marijuana, illegal social behaviors could lead to criminal records for young people who have needlessly viol violated the legislation. And that is Mr. Terre, who the street, to the social worker, uh, has said. Now, another lady in my writing who works with uh, young people with uh, mental health problems says that. Uh, Experiences with uh, psychosis of people of her, her clients are largely due to drug consumption. So more prevention and education is needed to uh, make sure that young people behave properly, behave and uh, use marijuana responsibly. And in order to meet current demand, 
all the uh, frontline intervention groups would have to be part of the consultation undertaken by the government regarding legal the marijuana legalization, and they said they have not been contacted so far by the government, even though this is an essential public policy change. Excuse me. I apologize, but uh, it's time for questions and comments. Perhaps the member could uh, come back to her remarks uh, during the time provided for questions and comments. Elementary Secretary to the Minister of Justice and Attorney General. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Um, I, first of all, I want to thank the, the member opposite for, for her, her fine speech. But I had, I had a question. All the, the facts that she quotes with respect to the levels of charges and numbers of charges being laid, I believe, from her speech originated from 2012. And, and are therefore quite dated. And I was just wondering if she had any more up-to-date information, and I can advise this House that, at least anecdotally, in speaking to law enforcement officials across the country, I understand that the number of possession charges has been reduced very, very substantially from coast to coast. And certainly in cities that I've spoken to, those numbers are a small, small fraction of what they were in 2012. But I wondered if the member opposite had any more up-to-date information. The Honourable Member for Saint-Abbé-Rousseau. Saint -Saint Thank you, Madam Speaker. Well, I have figures from 2014, Madam Speaker, which state that which come from Statistics Canada, and they say that uh, marijuana possession was uh, that's the number of arrests, 57,000. So I don't know what the figures are that the honourable member from uh, Scarborough Southwest uh, has. Perhaps he could. Uh, quote them to show that it is uh, the number has uh, diminished but that doesn't uh, change things the government st said explicitly that it would legalize marijuana so there will have to be if, if they want to legalize even the prime minister had said that uh, consumption and possession of marijuana should not lead to uh, young people having a criminal record if the prime minister himself said so and he even said that he had already used marijuana and he had no rec criminal record. He was lucky. He was lucky. But two thirds of young people aged between 18 and 24 are the hardest hit because they are the ones that have then end up with criminal records. They are the ones who suffer the heaviest consequences with regard to jobs and housing because uh, this will follow them for the rest of their lives. Questions et commentaires. The honourable member for Barry Innisfil. Madam Speaker, um, <clears throat> we've now heard uh, two members uh, of the NDP party speak about, uh, two honourable members, speak about uh, this issue. Uh, and the reality is that uh, it is still illegal in this land to possess marijuana. Uh, but in both of the speeches that we've heard, we've heard uh, references to young people. Now, marijuana is illegal for everybody in this land, uh, and I'm just wondering, just to uh, get away from any confusion that might exist, in the absence of any legislation, because we, we've got no legislation at this point, although the Liberals are proposing it, uh, what, would, what is the definition of young people uh, in the context of what we've heard this morning in the speeches, uh, Madam Speaker? The Honourable Member for saint sur Thank you, Madam Speaker. And uh, indeed, we're talking about young adults, so age 18 and over. And what we're talking about right now is the fact that, yes, it is illegal for everyone, except that the people who are the hardest hit, the people who uh, are the arrested uh, most often, who have the, m the most criminal records, are young people aged between 18 and 24. That is why I'm talking about those people, because they are the ones who will be affected for the rest of their lives. And it's not logical, because the Liberals say they want to decriminalize marijuana, so if they want to do so in a couple of years, then that means they want to eliminate criminal records. But in the meantime, there are still arrests being made. Even the police forces find that it's absurd, that it creates a confusion. What do they do about criminal records? Uh, will these people will these people be uh, sued? Will they be arrested? Will they will they be convicted? And I would like to remind the Conservatives that at their last convention, uh, it was voted that their party wants to decriminalize uh, marijuana, so they need to listen to their constituents. A brief question, the Honourable Member for Trois-Rivières, for a question. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I have a simple question. From 
uh, you know, from the, the liberal side, we hear about very vague timelines, uh, very vague deadlines. Some people say that uh, it, uh, it's going to take a couple of years, and yet legalization takes uh, an agreement with the provinces for distribution networks. So does that mean uh, that decriminalization is the only option? A brief response from the part of uh, the member for Sarabé Rissoua, please. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Yes, indeed. Right now, this we're talking about federal legislation. People are arrested for simple possession of marijuana. And if they are convicted or if they are charged by the provinces, it's under federal legislation. But the systems vary from province to province. So uh, there's definitely a problem with regard to this. Resuming debate, the Honourable Minister of... Uh